Are you ready to be blessed tonight? Yes. Amen. We're ready be, to be blessed at every meeting. Uh, there's nowhere on the face of the earth that I'd rather be than right here, right now. Amen? Yes. Praise the Lord. We, we're going to start right with an offering tonight. This is for the offering for Sharon Schools uh, to help uh, pay for the cost of being here and just the, the costs involved with putting on a camp. Uh, if you're writing a check, you can make it out to Sharon Schools. If you want a receipt, be sure and write that uh, Sharon Schools, write your name on the envelope you put, if you put cash in it. And we thank you for your contribution. Uh, we'd like to ask for about a dozen deacons, please, to come up. We have a couple more deacons that can help us here. the Lord. Okay, we'll have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just pray as we take the offering now that you bless us all, bless the giver, bless all that are here. We're, we're so thankful that you uh, have helped, helped us stretch your dollars, the dollars that are collected uh, and are used far and wide. We thank you for how you have blessed to multiply the giving of your saints. And we pray now uh, for this offering in Jesus' name. Amen.
David Luff, would you come up and we have two prayer requests here we're going to take at this time. I'll read this one from for Darlene Haney. Please pray for my mom. This is from Lisa Haney from St. Louis. She's struggling with anxiety, stress, and blood pressure, and she's not sure what is causing it. Please pray for peace, comfort, and guidance to know what to do. We'll pray right now. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you Sister Haney, Darlene Haney. We pray that you would place your hand upon her body uh, for whatever is behind the anxiety and the stress and the high blood pressure. We pray that you would bring a calmness and a peace and healing uh, physically, spiritually, in every, in every dimension. We just pray that you wrap your presence around her like a, like a mantle, like a garment, dear Lord. Even now as we pray in the name of Jesus, amen. Praise God. <clears throat> this prayer request is for Brandon R., Brandon is in prison in Regina Youth Corrections. He loves the Lord. He asked if we would pray for him that he would have better control of his emotions. Brandon was here last year for one service of camp, and he really misses the fellowship. And this was uh, submitted by Brian Hannigan. So let's just, let's just stand together as we pray for him. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> We just are thankful that though this young man is in difficult circumstances, circumstances that certainly we would, that we would, uh, certainly none of us would choose to, to have. But Lord, we're thankful that he knows you. We're thankful that he loves you, Lord Jesus. And he has asked uh, for us to pray for him tonight because he's struggling with his emotions which is not difficult to understand and so we just pray for him tonight lord he is he belongs to you and whether he is in prison or out of prison father he is your son and so father we just pray for him tonight we just ask that you would undertake and and by your holy spirit lord you would just you would just calm those emotions calm his mind lord and let his spirit just take over and and, and, and let that Holy Spirit, which is within him, comfort him in every way. We just ask that you, that you do this for us as we intercede for him in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Okay, the next item we're going, we're going to have a prayer here, and then afterwards Brother Bernard is going to come up and perhaps lead us, uh, uh, read a scripture to us and lead us in some worship. Um, we want to welcome here tonight, everybody in this room is special. Well, I have to be careful about saying someone's special because you're all special. But we want to welcome Dr. Sajith Matthew and Sharon Matthew. Sharon Matthew, Dr. Sajith, married Sharon on April the 1st, 2017. April the 1st, and we were there. It was about 95 degrees and hot and humid, and they had a, a, a worshipful, wonderful, wonderful wedding where God was glorified. It was about two hours long, no air conditioning, but it was, at, and I was wearing something like this. But anyway, it was absolutely beautiful. No one fainted, by the way. Beautiful, beautiful wedding. Sharon is an engineer. She comes from Mangalore, India. And uh, with immigration uh, issues as they are, uh, Brother uh, Sajith married Sharon, and then he returned to the United States, and then he worked on her immigration. And it took about a year before she could come here. And I'm sure that time went by very, very quickly. <laughs> they... They live in uh, Sterling Heights, Michigan. And Sharon and Sajith, would you just stand up a minute? I'm just gonna have you just stand up where you are. So just turn around for just a second here. 
So this is, uh, we congratulate you. We uh, want to say congratulations. And I'd like to encourage all of you here, when you see Sharon uh, around the Camp Brown, go over and congratulate her and show yourself friendly to her. Uh, uh, let her feel very welcome to be here. You can sit down just for a moment here. So this is Sharon's first camp that she's been at. And so it's a very wonderful, wonderful time. They are members of the Stratford, Ontario Assembly, traveling there from Sterling Heights, Michigan. Typically, we encourage uh, newly married couples uh, to go to the local church and feel free to ask your elders to bless your marriage and your local church. Uh, this situation is a little more unique because Sharon just recently got here from India and we want them to feel especially welcomed and blessed uh, to be here. We're gonna pray a blessing over them. This, this isn't a presbytery, but we're gonna pray a blessing and we're just gonna ask God to bless them in front of the congregation. And I'm going to, as we do that, I'm gonna ask for one other favor. We're gonna ask that the Lord bless their marriage. Now I'm gonna ask everyone that's married here, if you have a mate near you, reach over there and make sure you're sitting by them because when we pray for them, I want to pray for you too. It's right where you're at. I want you to just hold the hand of your mate. And we're going to ask God to bless your marriage too. Because God wants to bless our marriages from the very beginning to the, to the very end. Till death do us part. And that's what we're going to pray for. We're going to pray for them, but we're going to pray for all of you. Now we're going to ask, uh, Brother David Luff is up here and I'm up here. We've been... We've been blessed. We've seen uh, Dr. Sajif since he was 11 years old when he came to the United States, and we've been there when he graduated, and we've been kind of privileged to be a part of life events uh, in their lives. And uh, like I said, we were in India. Uh, we were part of the wedding uh, uh, group that married them. So it's been a great privilege to be with them. We're going to ask Brother Merv Smith to come up here in just a moment, too, and stand with us. Uh, Brother Mervyn Smith. Uh, Brother Merv Smith in India, in South America, in Guyana, is a legend. He, he's, I'm, he's a legend. If you go to India, or South America, or the Philippines, they say, how's Brother Smith? Tell us about Brother Smith. Everyone knows Uncle Smith, Brother Smith. So he should almost have his name in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, but I maybe I'm going too far. Or... Maybe I should say his wife should be in the 11th chapter of Hebrews. <laughs> but we're so honored to have Brother Smith, and we're going to have Brother Smith stand with us up here uh, as we pray a blessing over them. As I said, this isn't a presbytery. Uh, that, that will come at the appropriate time, praying over them. And typically, as you know, we like to pray and prophesy over people as a presbytery, preferably in the local assembly. That doesn't always happen that way, but that's where it is preferred. So I'm going to ask at this time, uh, 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 Brother Sajith and Sharon, if you will come up here, please, and Brother David Luff, and Brother Mur Smith, would you come up, please? I'm going to ask the uh, Ontario, Stratford, Ontario elders, Richard Holt, Steve Lefson, Calvin Martin, if you will come up here representing the local church, your local assembly, and we're just going to ask the Lord to bless them. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Brother Smith, just ask God to bless them, please. Our loving Father, our hearts are moved by the glory of your presence. And for this young couple, Lord, that have surrendered their lives to thee, that they may do a good work wherever you send them. Amen. 
and that there will be many souls come into the family of God as a result of their prayer and their faithfulness. Yes. We lay our hands upon them tonight and we bless them Amen. in the name of Jesus that the anointing of the Holy Spirit would be in their mind and in their hearts Amen. and in their hands, Lord, as they do the work of God. So, Lord, we bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Maybe one of the local elders just go ahead and pray a blessing. Dear Heavenly Father, we're just so blessed to know this couple. Amen, Lord. To know you brought them together. And Lord, on a personal note, I want to thank you for Sarge. As I know he was a dear friend to our family, even in some very difficult circumstances. Father, I pray you'll just bless him and this couple a hundredfold for what they've given out. Father, we know the work that he does and the work that Sharon does, and no doubt their home to come will touch the lives of many. And Father, not necessarily those that are doing well, but rather those that are not doing well. Amen. Father, we pray you'll bless their hands Amen. and their mouths Amen. and everything Amen. that they do. Bless their home there in Detroit. Amen. And Amen. Father, as we have grown to be blessed by them. Amen. Father, we just somehow pray you will bless them Amen. as they've been a blessing to many others as well. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we just thank you for bringing Sajith and Sharon together. Yes. Lord, we, we believe that you saw this union yes. in your mind as oh, yeah. I, Amen. even before the foundation of the earth was laid. Amen. And Father, we just thank you for uh, their coming together. We know oh, that yeah. they have left father and mother and joined to each other, oh. and a new decision-making oh, unit has been formed. Father, we just pray that you would bless them as they... Yeah. As they walk this path together, that each day that goes by, that which they, uh, the the love that they share will go stronger and stronger and deeper and deeper as every day goes by. Father, we know that the path ahead is is unknown to them and to us, but we believe, O God, that you have you have orchestrated the circumstances that they will face oh, along yeah. the way oh, to man. bring about the changes and the, 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 the growth in the spirit that you desire to co- accomplish in them. Oh, yeah. And so we pray for them, Lord, uh, in the good times and the bad times, yes. that they will all yes. uh, serve to, to cause them to grow uh, in, in, in every way, Lord, and especially in the spirit. Amen. And we pray for their home, Lord. We Amen. pray for uh, those that will be added to them, Lord, to Hallelujah. their home, Father, that it will be a blessed home. It will be a place where people will come Amen. and they will know uh, that the Spirit of God dwells there. Hmm. So, Father, we just uh, add uh, our blessings to to their parents who we know have prayed uh prayed uh, ardently for them and we just ask your blessings upon them in Jesus name. Yeah. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So look, I'm going to have you all stand for a minute. Oh, good. While they're 
finishing up their hugs and as I said when the uh, when the service is over and you see them uh, particularly Sharon you all know Sajith already we've known him since he was little but reach out to her and make her feel very very welcome we're very happy that she is here uh, you know she's leaving India to live here in the United States we really really want to welcome her now while you're standing um, if your spouse is with you uh, Hold her hand. Just make sure you get positioned. Uh, Debbie, come on up here, would you please, and hold my hand. <laughs> yeah, so if your spouse is here, just get together for a minute, hold her hand. If you're engaged, hold the hand of the one that you're engaged to. And we're just going to say a little prayer on behalf of everybody. Heavenly Father, we we'll take a moment here. We appreciate the awesomeness of marriage we realize that it's a very holy thing that you have created the first thing that you instituted in the garden we thank you for it lord we thank you for it we know that it can be a place of great joy and great peace and and uh, it's just filled with many wonderful things we also don't deny that it takes a lot of hard work for to work because of our fleshly impulses and our stubbornness. We recognize it doesn't just happen on cruise control. It takes a lot of effort. I would like to dedicate every married couple in this room here this evening and every, every married couple that's watching by live stream tonight or even at a later date. I'd like to pray for those that might be struggling, that might be early in their marriage, might be later in their marriage, but they have bumps and bruises and struggles. We just pray that you help them to find a way forward and not a way out, but a way forward to the Father. We pray, we, we recognize that we, we need your help. We need your help on a day-to-day -day basis in our homes and in our marriages. And we know that your seal of approval is upon marriage bless now all the married couples here and the couples that they represent and the couples that they bless and those that are engaged bless them as we petition you for your loving care father in jesus name we thank you amen, amen. you can be seated thank you brother bernard you can be seated for a moment Jesus, finding more power than I've ever dreamed, but not in that. I've learned how to lean and depend on Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's my friend, he's my guide. What but it's what a fellowship, it's what a first word. So, anyway, leaning on the everlasting arms, but not that uh, same, not that melody. Not that melody. Are you afraid of Give me that melody. Praise God. I'd like us to turn to our songbooks. Um, sorry, I do not have one here. That's it. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Page eight seven at the front.
I would not be singing it in the usual key to how we know it. I'd be just changing the tune a little bit. I've learned how to live and depend on Jesus. He's my friend and he's my guide. I've learned how to live and depend on Jesus. I found out if I trust him, he will provide. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on his arms what a blessedness what a peace is mine leaning on his arms i've learned how to lean and depend on jesus he's my friend and he's my guide. I've learned how to lean and depend on Jesus. I've found out if I trust him, he will provide. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on his arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on his arms. I've learned how to lean and depend on Jesus. He's my friend And he's my guide I've learned how to lean And depend on Jesus I've found out if I trust him, he will provide. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on his arms, I have blessed peace with my Lord so near leaning on his arms i've learned how to lean and depend on jesus he's my friend and he's my guide i've learned how to lean and depend on Jesus. I've found out if I trust him, he will provide. Oh, I've found out if I trust him, he will provide. Oh, I've found out if I trust him, he will 
provide. Praise the Lord. It's so much a joy and fellowship when we can gather together like this. Oh, praise the Lord. What a blessedness. What a peace we have. Isn't that so? Yes. We have the peace, the peace of Jesus Christ. The peace which passes all understanding. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way. You know, I'd like to, you to forgive me. I don't know how it happened to me, but on Sunday evening, I thought the service was going to be finishing at 9 o'clock. So that's why I finished my message just before 9 o'clock. <laughs> so that I could give enough time for the announcements. Only to know that the service was going until 9.30. I said, oh my. So you know what, I was told that I have an extra half an hour. <laughs> Don't worry, I wouldn't take up that whole half an hour. I want to give Brother Miller enough time to come to share. But the bottom line that I would have liked to share with us on Sunday was that scripture or is that scripture taken from Matthew 24? In Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13. And you can look at it. You can read it. And enjoy it. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way. It is so sweet to walk in this way, and especially when we walk to the end. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. That's the bottom line there. If we want to be saved, we must come to the end. Amen? Amen. We must endure to the end. Forgive me, just let us just take a short moment and look at the book of uh, uh, Job chapter... Um, Job chapter 1. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's move forward a little bit here. I wouldn't be long. Job chapter 2. We, we know all that happened to Job. I'm sure that we have read it all. We know the experience Job had. But here, after he has been through all that he had been through, he has lost everything except his life. In the ninth verse of the second chapter of Job, then his wife said to him, do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. Oh my goodness. She didn't want him to endure to the end. But he said to her, you speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept, accept good from God and shall not we accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Wow. That's a man to take example from. Amen? Amen? He did not give up, but he, oh, glory to God, he battled 
right to the end. Here, in the 42nd chapter, and the 10th verse of that same book of Job, and the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Because he did not give up. He endured all unto the very end. And I'm encouraging us today, let's not give up. Let us continue, brethren. Let us continue that walk with God. And pressing on. That's right. Brother Miller says it all the time. For the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Let's turn to our, our song books again. Page 52. Oh, it's you again? Page 52 again? So you see, I did not take up my whole half an hour. Page 52, he giveth more grace. I'd like you to stand with us, please. Praise the Lord. And that's what God is going to do. He's going to give us more grace when the burdens go greater. Now that's the assurance that we have. Grace is right. Right before us. Praise the Lord. He said that more strength when the labor is increased. To added affliction, he, had, he added his mercy. To multiply trials, trials, his multiplied peace. His love has no limit. His grace has no measure. His power has no boundary known unto men. But out of his infinite riches in Jesus, he giveth. And he giveth. And he giveth again. And he is going to give us if we continue our walk with God. But if we give up, oh, we would not receive. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He gave more grace when the burdens grow greater. He sendeth more rain when the labors increase to added affliction he added his mercy to multiply trials his multiplied peace his love has no limit his grace has no measure his power has no boundary known unto men for out of his infinite riches in Jesus he giveth and giveth and giveth again when we have exhausted a store of endurance when our strength has failed and the days have done when we reach the end of our resources our Father's forgiving is only me. Oh, praise the Lord. 
His love has no limit. His grace has no measure. His power has no boundary known unto man. For out of no visit night riches in Jesus he gave up and give up and give up the chorus again his love has no limit his grace has no measure. His power has no boundary known unto man. For out of his infinite riches, the Lord. You may have your seats. Brother Miller will now minister unto the to you. Praise the Lord. Oh, sorry. I thought he was going to take his half hour and he cut it down, so we shall proceed. Oh, that's loud. No, no, not now. Praise God. Hello, everybody. It's good to be in the house. Praise God. The house that God is building. We're members of this house. Members one of another. The apostle said we are flesh of his flesh and we are bone of his bone. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. And on this 70th anniversary of the present outpouring of the Spirit and visitation of God, we are reminded that his objective is his entire creation, that his mind and will is to bring back into harmony with himself all that he has made and all that have gone before us and all that are in the earth yet today. His mind is to bring forth a whole new creation, brought into the likeness and image of God himself. And we have been custodians now for 70 years of a tremendous truth, the th very thing that multitudes have sought after and have longed for, for many generations, has now come very nigh unto us. We are closer now, you see, than we ever were before. God is moving by his Spirit in all the earth. And we're so glad tonight for those who are joining us from the various countries and locations, states and provinces, indeed throughout the world, by the means of, I always call it cyberspace, but I guess it's supposed to be called World Wide Web. I, somehow cyberspace to me sounds kind of a little too, a little too woo for me, but uh, it's the old word us old timers used to use. But God has his people and he has arranged tonight for you who are tuned into this broad, uh, into this World Wide Web, that you would hear again, God loves you, and there's a kingdom 
that shall know no end. And he is inviting you into his family. He's invited you into his house. And he says, come to me, all of you who are weary and are heavy laden. And he says, I will give you rest. Um, he will take, my friend, the broken pieces of your life. And he will bring it all back together again. And he will fill you with his glory and with his life. Um, Brian, Brother Brian has been ministering to various people in the, in the prisons and penitentiaries. And some of you have been involved in the same ministry. And we give glory to God. Today I was over at, what's the, where were we, dollar store? Today I was over at dollar, where else would we go, you know, <laughs> dollar store. Can't even afford uh, Walmart. So anyway, uh, we're dollar store people. So, um, or dollar tree, <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon my silliness, uh, but that's the way I am, you see. He loves me anyway, yeah, and I love you too, and I know he loves you with all that's in him. But we were over at Dollar Store, just uh, uh, outside Dollar Store. I just walked outside, and Brother Brian is standing there with his, his machine, you see how technological I am. <laughs> and he's talking on the phone, of course. And he's, uh, he's saying, uh, Brother Miller, would you like to speak with the brother in the prison that you were talking to? Jack, Jack is his name. Yeah, I didn't know if I should say his name, Jack. Many of us have prayed for Jack. I've never met him, but I know him, praise God. That's how it is when you're in the realm of the eternal. When you live in that realm, you don't know people after the flesh. You know them after the spirit. And spirit communes with spirit that we are the children and the sons of God. Praise God. So I never met Jack. And Brother Brian said, uh, would you like to talk to Jack? Well, when I heard the name, there was a little skip in my heart. Like the kind, you know, that the joyful skip. Uh, Praise the Lord. I said, yes, I would like to talk to him. Well, that little conversation, never seen the man. I know of his story, but that little conversation, you knew you were talking to one of them. Praise his wonderful name. One of them who has been redeemed, Amen. hallelujah, by the blood of the Lamb. And I pray for him. And I pray for all of those that you minister to, Brother Brian, and the others who go with you, uh, are together with you. And you have a tremendous opportunity there to share the simple message, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. There are many in search of God, in search of union with their maker, but haven't quite yet arrived at that place. Um, but you know, it's because we sometimes look amiss, we ask amiss, and we do more searching than we actually need to search. Because he is standing there, just like this beautiful picture. He's standing there knocking. Behold, I knock, knocking at the door of your heart, bidding you to let him come in. Jesus is our hope. Jesus is our life. Jesus is our center. In him we live and we move and we dwell and we have our being. I know I'm speaking to some of you out there in cyberspace today. Who are hearing this right now that Jesus loves you we invite you to give your heart to him we invite you to come to him he opens the door and bids you come into this great and vast family you may say well I have sinned you have no idea how much I have sinned I say to you today he died for every one of those sins Hallelujah, there's forgiveness in Jesus. There's reconciliation 
within Jesus. Um, our hope is built, dear ones, on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Um, so even as we are speaking, come to him. You know, I'm used to ministering to those areas on radio uh, for 40 years. It's a long time. And I never neglected at the close of any of our uh, Global Missions broad Sharon School broadcasts, but to bid them to come. That long, long altar is here now, and it stretches out across the miles, and it stretches out across the airways, and it stretches forth right unto you where you are tonight. Um, hallelujah. That long, long altar. Just come as you are. Let him take the broken pieces of your life and put it all back together again. There is no such thing as hopelessness. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ. So I invite you, it's an opportunity right now, to invite you to come to Jesus um, he loves you. He cares for you. He's even now wrapping his loving arms around about you. And he's giving you peace. You feel that? It's the peace of God that passes all understanding. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you forevermore, Jesus. Our Savior, our Redeemer, and king. There are many religions. There are many so-called ways to God. But I must tell you today that there really is only one way to God. Only one way to God. And he's a person. And he has, his na has a name. And his name is Jesus. He says, come unto me. Come unto Jesus. Hallelujah. All of you who are weary and heavy laden, he said, and I will give you rest. And he will give you the peace of God that passes all understanding. Man, when you've got a, a congregation out there of thousands scattered throughout the world, you have to let the evangelist in you come out a little bit, huh? Praise God. <laughs> to tell the whosoever will, whosoever will, that they may come. Now you who've wandered far away, are there any of you out there? I suspect there are. You who have wandered far away, you who feel like you've, you've missed the mark and you're, you're, you're ready to throw it all aside. I say to you, together with all of your brothers and sisters here, it's the same old message. Jesus loves you. He will take you from where you are to where he is. I used to hear the old evangelist say, uh, God will meet you halfway. That's not true. God will meet you all the way. He will meet you where you are. In your darkness, in your sin, in your desperation. And in the midst of your wickedness, of your miserable life. He will meet you where you are. And he will come to to take you out of darkness. What a savior. What a redeemer. What a wonderful, wonderful Lord. Heavenly Father, tonight in the name of Jesus, we reach out across these airwaves and, and all of the technology of the day. We reach out as a people, lifting up those who have fallen, reaching forth unto those who are slipping away. And dear Lord, bidding them all to come, to come unto you, for we know you love them. Oh, there is no sin too great 
You are greater than all our sin. And so we commit them, each one, into your heart and into your loving care. Now, if you're out there and you have prayed with us, I would like to invite you to write to us. I don't know how the technology works. If you can respond right now, you can do that. Otherwise, at least let us know that you've given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I promise you, he will be with you always. He will be with you always. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never abandon you like an orphan in the storms of life. But bless God, he will come to you. He's always there. Even when your hope is gone, he's there. And you who are in the sound of his voice tonight, who are in the tabernacle, the same message is for you, same message is for me. You know, I've found it to be so. There's no life like the Jesus life. Knowing the Son of God loves me, for God so loved the world. That's you, and that's I, that's us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have eternal, everlasting life. So thank you, Jesus. Can we say amen tonight? I suppose I could sit down now, but... Knowing me, I'm not ready to sit down yet. I think the Lord wants to say a little more to us who are now on the journey, who are now along the way, moving on to God's new and glorious day. Something I read not too, or heard not too long ago was in regard to the thief. Who were, there were two thieves on the cross, crosses that were crucified with Jesus. One of them was a real scamp, a real scoundrel. He couldn't see the Lord, who he was. You see, you must see the Lord. You must see him in order to know him and to love him. The one totally rejected him. But the other, who was a thief, a real thief, I have no idea what all he did, but his, his, uh, his punishment or penalty was execution by death uh, on the cross, just as the other. But this one looked upon his marvelous face as he hung there on Calvary's tree, dying for the sin of the whole world. And somehow he saw that this man was dying for him also. How could he see the Lord? The Lord himself draws us and he opens our understanding. And this man said to Jesus, according, I believe the King James Version says simply, remember me. And Jesus said, today you shall be with me. <laughs> Look at that. You born from above, touched by the, the anointed oh, love of God that drew this man on the cross to the one who stood in the midst, uh, dying for his sin. But the Aramaic, this is what, in, I've said this many places because it intrigues me. I understand in the, at least one of the Aramaic uh, renditions, Jesus spoke Aramaic, by the way. I believe he was also fluent in, in Greek. The whole New Testament is written in Greek. And uh, likely uh, in Hebrew, because it was the, the known language of the region, as was Greek. And, but Aramaic was kind of a local type language. Jesus spoke Aramaic, and some of his words actually are in the New Testament in Aramaic. Uh, nonetheless, one of the renditions from the Aramaic says it a little differently. 
than the King James Version, where the King James Version simply said, remember me. Lord, he said, that's, that's what gets me. Lord, he said, remember me. He saw the Lord. He, oh, hey, uh, he, hey, he saw the Lord high and lifted up. His train was filling the temple. And this thief looked upon him and said, Lord, my Lord, remember me. The Aramaic says it a little different. The Aramaic says, Lord, when you come into the power of your kingdom, Lord, when you come into the power of your kingdom, put me back together again. Whoa! Put me back together again. The whole world Needs, that was quite a shout, wasn't it? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Could use a few more of them in the house tonight. But imagine, Lord, when you come into the power of your kingdom, put me back together again. And Jesus responded, Today you shall be with me in paradise. Isn't that what he does with all of us? Broken, messed up, washed up, out of harmony with everything. He put, when we come to him, he puts us back together again. Behold, he said, I make all things new. Um, he spoke of a new creation. The scriptures speak of a new creation. Old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. This is the gospel. This is the good news. This is the gospel of the kingdom. All of those years, preaching with some of the other brethren on the, the broadcast overseas, I never neglected to end the broadcast except with the, always with these words. Dear friends, the best is yet to come. And then I would say, keep on keeping on. How do you like that? The best is yet to come. I don't care what your, I do care, but whatever your experience is in God today, He's not finished with you yet. The best is yet to come. Hallelujah. So we must keep on keeping on. What a day. What a glorious day. The kingdom of God has come to the earth. We speak of a, a kingdom that shall not be moved. And this is truth. We speak of a kingdom that shall come. We speak of a kingdom that is coming. And we speak also out of our spirit, out of the depths of our spirit, of a kingdom that is already here. It's in you. Jesus said the kingdom of God, the, the old Pharisees of all people, were questioning him in regard to this, when shall thy kingdom come, sir? When shall I, I can just hear them, you know, their robes and all the rest, you know, they think, thought they were somebody, you see. You're in bad shape when you think you're somebody, but you're in good shape when you know that he is somebody. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Amen, church. Um, but they said, where is this kingdom? Where is this kingdom of which you speak? And he said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. It does not come with outward show. But the kingdom of God is within you. Of course, they were confounded. But you know, we have lived to experience that. We have lived to see that. We have lived to know that. The kingdom of God 
Get it deep within your spirit. The kingdom of God is not far from you. The kingdom of God is within the reach of us all. The kingdom of God has come nigh unto us. The church is also an important part of the kingdom of God. Our families, our individual lives, we are kingdom people, kingdom walkers. Hallelujah. Kingdom talkers. Is that true? Kingdom walker, kingdom talker. Kingdom walker, kingdom talker. Kingdom walker, kingdom talker. Hallelujah. Because what's within you must come out from you. And the spirit of Christ Jesus, hallelujah, is within you. He is the king of the kingdom. You belong no more to yourself. You belong to the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We've been hearing a lot about righteousness. We've been hearing a lot about obedience. We've been hearing a lot about, what are we really saying? About walking in the spirit. As many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Give no place to the enemy. Sometimes even God's people allow themselves to be run around by the old slewfoot himself, the old devil who's running them here and running them there and running them ragged and running them into the depths. But I say to you, you do not need to give him a minute's thought because he is an enemy who was defeated on Calvary's tree. Hallelujah! And he has no power, no power over you. He will make you think things you would never ordinarily think. He can make you believe things you wouldn't ordinarily believe. Why is there division sometimes amongst the people of God themselves? It's because of the work of the enemy. The devil is real. Don't misunderstand me. The devil is alive. I was going to say the devil is alive and well. Well, he has never been well. <laughs> he has never been well. And he knows his end. He knows his end. He knows about that lake. Hallelujah. That lake with fire. And that lake with brimstone. We know about that lake too. We know about the fire of God. We know about that fire that cometh from above, which is a cleansing fire. It's a purifying fire. Our God, oh, thank God for the fire today. Amen. Our God is a, clean, is, a, is a consuming fire. His intent is to consume all of that that is within you and within me and within us as a people. Hallelujah. To consume it all that we might come forth as pure gold. God has a plan. God has a purpose. And he has a means to that end. And as I said from the beginning, God's objective is the whole world. Jesus died for the sin of every man, every woman, every boy, every girl who's ever seen the light of day. Make yourself available to him. Your ministry and your gifts are very empowering, more so than we probably realize, because that too, the gifts and ministry, is the manifestation of Christ himself in you. That's what it is. The gifts are not just some ethereal woo -woo 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 kind of thing. Not at all. I shouldn't say that woo -woo -woo business. I was saying that one day in Minneapolis Church. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> Several years ago. And I said, I, I'm not interested in that woo -woo 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 -woo. Well, 
Well, right after church, of course, we've got young people there. Right after church, we all go into the pizza parlor, and when I walk in, everybody goes, woo! <laughs> 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 but God uh, is not in the woo woo realm. God's in a high place, in a holy place. <laughs> Even the angels cry holy. It's in that place where everything that hath breath praises the Lord. But we are a people of kingdom quality. Because we've been born into the kingdom of our God. And he has promised to be with us, never to leave us, of course, never to forsake us, but to not only be with us, but work with us. Hallelujah. And he is a present help in the time of trouble. Has anybody ever experienced a time of trouble? Put up your hand. There's got to be more than five. Come on now. Of course, we all have. And probably will experience many times yet like this. But he's a present help in the time of trouble. In the midst of the storms of life, he carries us through. I sometimes wonder what people, what, what do they hold on to when they have no real hope? People who really have no relationship with God. To some people, a lot of people believe in God. Even a lot of people who say, like Brother Wayne said the other day concerning an individual, he doesn't believe in God. He says, but I don't believe him, Wayne said. I say that's true. So a lot of people who say they don't believe in God, but I don't believe them, you see. We have all come out from God and all must return unto God. And every man in his own order. There's a way that seems right to a man, to a human, but the end thereof is death. But Jesus is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. And if I may quote him tonight, and I shall, the way, the truth, and the life, he said, no man, no person, nobody, no man comes to the Father but by me or through me. Isn't that something? That's a bold, that's a bold declaration. But it is the truth. The way, the truth. Truth is not a code of ethics. There are a lot of ethical people. Code is not a, a set of doctrines. Truth is not some moral code either. But truth is a person. And his name is Jesus. Jesus. Could you say that lovely name again? Jesus. Jesus. How about once more? Jesus. Ah, oh, let's do it better yet. Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come to me, he said. Your rest is waiting here for you now. Oh, praise God, praise God. In this, the 70th year anniversary, if you will, of this present move of the Spirit, there is a renewed interest in what is happening with this people. And even if it's not so much what is happening with this people now, there's certainly a renewed interest in what, was ha what happened to this people so many years ago. Some approach it from an academic perspective, and they too seem to get kind of caught up in something beyond what they were expecting that they would get caught up in. I deal with some of these kind of people. I like to deal with academics. Um, what I don't like is when an academic tells me, well, I'm an academic too. Well, if you have to say that you're an academic, you're probably not, you see. So, but they're honest men and honest women among them too. And even among the theologians, 
I know Brother Oldridge wrote several, he and I had this out many times. He, he said many years ago to me, he said, we don't pay very much attention to theologians. <laughs> and I understand exactly what he's talking about. But theologians are men and women just like you and just like I, like us. And I pray when they study this move of the Spirit, that the things that we have experienced and received from God will just leap off the pages and swallow them up. Yeah. Praise God. You know, just to use as a little example, when I was um, uh, doing a historical, uh, a historical research, working on a, a historical study, uh, the uh, professors uh, were all Anglicans, or like you say in the, in the States, Episcopalians. And uh, they all wanted, of course, they all had to read my dissertation, and they were supposed to pick at it, you know, and find faults with it. Would you believe I never got a picky thing from any of them? All I got was questions. And they weren't questions about so much the, the type of style of writing or anything like that that I was engaged in, but questions about this move of the Spirit. They wanted to know, one of them wanted to know more about our uh, teaching on the Feast of Tabernacles, for example. Now, that's pretty deep for these fellas. Well, sorry, I hope you're not listening. But uh, <laughs> in case you are, you too are welcome. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But uh, they want to know about Feast of Tabernacles. So I gave one of them the book, Feast of Tabernacles. And that same fellow, when he wrote his um, critique, he wrote, I, I had I'd written it down here as to what he said. He said, the Feast of Tabernacles is the foundational text for this movement, and some attention ought to be given to that writing. Uh, that's okay. I wish you would have said full attention given to it, but some attention will take that, you see. And then one of them from, uh, uh, it was, I was writing in the history of the move, and uh, one of them from Rome, not a Catholic, but uh, uh, one of their bishops of the Anglican, in churches in Rome, he wrote back, and you know, they, they're supposed to give you a grade as well, and they use the, the letter system, A, B, C, D, and all that kind of thing. And uh, what he wrote back uh, after he had done his critique and all was he had so many questions about the move of the Spirit that it almost seemed I had to write another paper just for him. I didn't, of course, but I answered all of the questions. And he called me brother. And you know, they're big into this reverend stuff. Right reverend and you know, all this kind of, I don't know how you get the right reverend out of scripture, but it, better than being a wrong reverend, I guess. But so the right reverend, whatever uh, uh, title he carried, he said, uh, my grade for this paper or for this dissertation. He said is an A plus. <laughs> then he said, and if I could have, I would have given it an A plus plus. I'll take it, <laughs> praise God. I was delighted because of all the questions that he asked concerning this move of the spirit. He was a spirit, was a spirit filled brother and uh, knew the Lord, and was, of course, in his, his denomination, uh, a, a leader in it. And uh, he was Italian, and he wrote across the front of the page in big letters. He wrote, Fantastico. I don't speak Italian, but if you do, it must mean fantastic. Not anything about me, but the content is what he was referring to. Fantastico. Fantastic. This whole story, isn't it so? This whole story, our story, his story, 
is fantastical. It's out of this world. It's beyond the realms of the academic. It's beyond the realms of ordinary men. Beyond the realms of rich and powerful and mighty and great in the world, so-called. This message is for the whosoever will, they may come. He will stir up the spirit that is within those who will have ears to hear, eyes to see, and as we sing, hearts that will understand. But Feast of Tabernacles seem to grab these fellows for some reason. And I'm beginning to see that this is, this is a very powerful, now I feel like I'm back on television with global missions, like we do in the West Indies. Always had to hold up a book for everybody. But, uh, oh, you didn't know we were on television? The move was on television for a few years in the West Indies. Brother Holt was one of our stars when he came around, you see, and some of the other brethren as well. But I used to do that always and hold up a book. I hold up this book tonight, The Feast of Tabernacles, because it is a book that has, one of our books, that has gone around the world and has impacted many, many lives concerning the truths of the kingdom. We may say, well, why don't they fill all of our churches? I wish they would. I wish they would fill all of our churches to the brim. But even if they receive something more than they ever had before, victory is his. Praise God. Brother Holt, Herrick Holt, I traveled with him a lot as a, uh, with all of the brethren, but uh, he and I traveled together a lot and into new areas mostly. And he'd all, if I'd be discouraged when the numbers didn't show, you know, at an altar call, he would take care of that right away, minister to me as a young person in the spirit. The results, he said, belong to God, not to us. They belong to eternity. And seed is sown every time we minister in the power of the Spirit. That's for all of us. Seed is sown. Sometimes it's watered, you see. And sometimes there's a reaping. But the reaping belongs to the one Hallelujah, who is the seed, who is the life. And his name, again, is Jesus, you see. Oh, blessed be God. So do not be discouraged in well-doing. Exercise your gifts. I would encourage you, as all of the brethren do, exercise your gifts and exercise your ministry. Stir up, Paul says to Timothy. Timothy was a very young lad, by the way. And he said to Timothy, stir up the gift of God that is within you by the putting on or the laying on of my hands. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. You have a responsibility Mainly, that is making yourself available to him through relationship. It is not so much doing something or not doing something as it is relationship with him. That's what it is, really, to be led by the Spirit. Have, have you noticed that? As you go about life's journey, somehow... <laughs> He has a way of setting things up sometimes. You just have to shake your head as you watch God move. How in the world did he do that one? He sets it up. He brings the right person at the right time across your pathway when least expected. Look at our brother from South America, Brother Guyana. He told... <laughs> he, he, Mr. Guyana, he, he told us, what is it, the day before, whatever it was, you pray for people in Walmart. 
I said, whoa! And I have all these visions in my head of you got somebody on their knees down there next to the food aisle or something, you know, and you're praying for these people. But I believe you. He offers. <laughs> he offers the good news to the whosoever will. It's strange. You gotta be, you gotta be sensitive. And that comes through relationship with God and with the church and with the body being built up, you see, prepared for ministry. That's what happens to us on Sunday mornings. We're built up in the holy faith. We build one another up. We have the privilege. See, we talk about body ministry. We have the, the privilege of building one another up in the Holy Ghost for service, for ministry, for being who we are called to be in him. Amen? Amen. I believe, I believe. The older I get, the more I believe. I thank God that I can believe more and more. And I want to, right up unto that perfect day. See, I've fallen short. Anybody else here? There's about seven of you. <laughs> we should get together and form a little club here tonight <laughs> while the rest of them all pray for us. <laughs> Hallelujah! But to tell you the truth, we all fall short. We all come short of the glory of God. And one of our biggest problems is, and this is the work of the devil, one of our biggest problems is we beat ourselves up because of that. And so we are participants in uh, retarding, and, and, and I mean that word in the right way, retarding or impeding our spiritual progress and our spiritual growth. We are participants in doing that because we beat ourselves up. When we fall short... We have an advocate before the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and he is the one that we should be going to. Hallelujah. He will again pick you up, even if it's from the miry clay, Amen. and he will set your feet on the king's highway. Look for those little openings. Look for those little opportunities. You don't have to preach a sermon like I might, you know. God help me not to be so preachy. My wife was the first one said, hey amen, did I hear that? <laughs> like my kids used to say, you're trying to correct them, and then they would say, dad, we don't need a sermon. <laughs> we hear enough of them on Sunday mornings, if they figured. Well, there's, some there's certainly some truth in that, too. It isn't what you say. It's the spirit in which you address the situation that is before you. It is the anointing, hallelujah, that will minister life to people. Amen. Praise God. As Brother Holt, uh, our, our present Brother Holt, was talking about you, you do these things like with your neighbors and all of that and you're, you're praying, you're hoping, you know, that it'll take some root and, and some fruit is going to come forth from that. You know, he's absolutely right. Just being civil sometimes is ministering Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Being mannerly is ministering. In this day, being mannerly is ministering Christ. Hallelujah. Being courteous is ministering Christ. It's not that big of a deal as we try to make it out to be, but sometimes he opens the door for more than mannerliness and courtesy and all that goes with it, but to say a word, a word in season, something that will just reach out, grab a hold of them, like, like Brother Holt, Senior, when I traveled with him, I heard him say this to me more than one time. He talked about reading the scriptures and encouraged me to read the scriptures. I encourage you to read the scriptures. 
I encourage you to get into the Word of God, to become familiar with the, the thus saith the Lord uh, in holy writ. Praise God. And he is a big encourager in that direction. And then he said, you will notice, sometimes when you read, you know, I was in my 20s, I was a kid in a way, and he said, you'll notice sometimes when you read, you don't understand anything of, anything of what you are reading. He said, you leave it to God. It's already been placed in your innermost being. And he says, later, you'll come along someday and you'll pick up that book and you will read that same scripture again and you will say something like, how come I never saw that before? And you'd read it. Maybe you'd read it many times. You all can identify with this. How come I never, how is it that I never saw that before? This time, like Brother Holt used to tell me, it just leaps off the pages. And then he said to me once, and I still laugh about this, he said, we were talking to each other, and he said, it leaps off the pages it grabs a hold of you, and he grabbed me here. And then he said, and it swallows you up. <laughs> Whoa. Have you ever had that experience? I've had it many times since then. It leaps off the pages. It grabs a hold of you. It sucks you in. <laughs> no, it swallows you up. There's a transformation that's happening in your spirit. You know, the word of God is rich, it's powerful, it's alive. Our, not just our young people, our older people, everybody should spend time in the written word. Uh, hallelujah. And to become fully uh, acquainted with where it is written and what is written. And even when you may not understand it, that very word, because it is alive, seems to take a root somewhere in your spirit. And then when the time is right, you're reading along gently and quietly, and he takes the fan, it wouldn't be a Canadian flag, but he takes a fan that's in his hand, and there's that gentle, oh, <laughs> that gentle blowing of the wind, that gentle moving of the spirit, and you feel like, man, I'm alive now. Alive, alive. Oh, alive forevermore. See, this belongs to you. Belongs to me. Belongs to us. It belongs to everybody out there in cyberspace tonight. I would urge you, if you do not have a copy, or if yours is somewhere in the dustbin, if you do not have a copy of our book, The Feast of Tabernacles, I ask the brothers to put extra ones out there, and they are out there. I would urge you to pick one up. My goodness, if even Anglican bishops are saying, this is the prime, you know, message of the movement, then it's something we should be paying attention to. You know this thing, you may not know this. I'm not too technological, but I know this, that this thing's all over the internet. You can actually, actually read the entire copy from, pay, from page one right to the end. And for those of you who don't know, it was Brother George Warnock, who was the instrument, that's all I, I would say, the instrument who penned this book way back in 1951, in the early years and beginning of this move of the spirit. Brother Warnock was a very humble man. He was recently called home in his 90s uh, to be with the Lord. He loved us all. He loved all the brethren. Everybody loved him. And uh, he was never... I, I know this from my research in history. He was never set as a traveling elder. I always assumed he'd been a traveling elder. He said, no, I was never set as a traveling elder. He said, the most I, well, he put, the most I was was a deacon. He said, I was just, just 
God bless him. Just a deacon. God will use you, whoever you are. You may not write books. You may write books, I don't know. But uh, God will use you, whoever you are, for his glory and for his honor. Because he loves you so. But George was, Brother Warnock, I'm sorry. We're getting too familiar with this business. You always say first names to ministries and things. I just called Terry so many times. My kids this time are just about, well, enough. So this one guy says to me, Terry. <laughs> I said, did you mean Brother Miller? They call me Brother Miller, you know, I'm so used to that. And uh, he said, oh, Brother Miller. Hi, I'm Terry. I said, <laughs> and I just undid everything that I was trying to bring across. I guess what bothers me about that once, Brother Oldridge was telling me, and you know, Brother Oldridge is pretty straight laced at these things. He was telling me one time, this little kid, he said, come up to him, pointed like that, and called me Bob. <laughs> he said, it's Brother Oldridge. <laughs> I don't want to make a deal about that at all. But I think we, we have to respect one another. Don't be afraid to use the word brother or sister, whether you use first name or last name is immaterial, but brother and sister especially when you're among uh, the people of God. I'm so used to saying Brother Miller, I sometimes tell the people in the world when they ask, and who are you? I say, I'm Brother Miller. <laughs> and my elder says to me, we use that in church, <laughs> not, not out here talking to people of the world. But you know, that's an interesting thing. In the West Indies, we were kind of brought up on that. I assume it's like that in Grenada too, where they tend to call you Brother James. Even the world calls you Brother James. The people of the world call you Sister James because you are kind of set apart in the sense that they know this one is a Christian. And the outside world recognizes it. When we were, ju we were just in Antigua um, for three uh, weeks, and uh, I came across all kinds of people were out in the world who called me Brother Miller. And um, I said, well, and nobody at Portisha Prairie calls me Brother Miller, but <laughs> I'll take it. Because what they're saying is a little message that they expect something of Christ to be in you and in your life and to minister back unto them. So let's respect one another. But you can have all the respect in the world if you do not have that personal relationship with Christ, you're on sinking ground. Sinking sand, I'm sorry. On Christ, the solid rock, we must stand. But so get yourself a copy. It's not easy reading, as, as many who've been on the way a long time know. But it's one of those books where you can just kind of meditate and read as, as, as time goes on. And when you're done with that, Brother Ol not, not necessarily when you're done with that, it might take you two years, but uh, Brother Olson, Jeff, told me, well, if you're pushing that one, push this one too. <laughs> so now I got myself a job here. The, the move of the spirit. If you have not received a copy, do not have one, please pick one up. They're in the back. It's the new book put out by the, uh, by the ministries, uh, simply entitled, This Move of the Spirit. And whoever came up with that title, I, I applaud you. You know, we often said, oh, the move, the move of the Spirit. But when I read that word, this move of the Spirit, I thought to myself, there is the truth. It's this move. This is the way we have been called. And it is in this move of the Spirit we are being raised up into beautiful heights in His glory. So be sure to get one of them. If you haven't read it, somebody says, oh, it's the same old thing. It is not the same old thing. This is a whole new book and you should read it. Uh, sometimes I'm asked, do you 
know of anything that you could that we have that you could recommend to give to seekers somebody interested in knowing more about this move of the script yep we got it right here this is it I would not hesitate to give this book to almost anybody who is sincerely asking about this way so you got two books to pick up this uh, Feast of Tabernacles is for a love offering of $25 and this one for a love offering of 50 because it's color. <laughs> I better, better erase that right now. <laughs> I used to listen to the old evangelists, that's how they all talked in their fundraisers. No, these are free, free, free because we have been set free. We simply expect you to make, uh, you know, respectful use of them because this is paid for by the brothers and sisters in Christ from all over the world. But they will, they will help you along the way. But more than anything, get back into the Word. Amen. This is the Word of the living God. Amen. I notice in some of the churches I, I go to, I was going to say hang out in. But I, some of the churches I go to, I notice very few Bibles anymore. Now they will say, well, it's a technological age, and so we have this little thing, whatever you call it, and my wife's got one. She's even got the songbook on there. I don't even know how to turn it on, to be honest with you. I really don't. He said, well, just use your cell phone. What cell phone? I don't have a cell phone. Andy Snoke will confirm that. I do not have a cell phone. Not that I'm against cell phone, but I just don't have one. I have a little emergency thing, you know, if I get stuck and it said in there, I looked at it the other day, and it said, only useful to call 911. So <laughs> you probably won't reach me on that, and I can't reach you. To get into the word. You get into the word, and I promise you, the word will get into you. Bring your Bible, even if it's in that electronic form, bring it with you to the services here and to the meetings at home. For we are the people of the book. We are the people of the living God. It is in him we live and move and dwell and have our being. So I'm going to close my notes, none of which I referred to, <laughs> or none of which I used. I just hope that I am not off the beam tonight. It just seemed like God was saying, tell them I love them. I care for them. Yes, Lord, when you come into the power of your kingdom, put me back together again. And we hear his voice. He says, today, you shall be with me in paradise. That's for you right now. Today, you shall be with me in paradise. That is in the realm of God, in the realm of the heavenlies, into the realm where Jesus lives and abides forevermore. Oh, what a day. What a day. What a marvelous, glorious day. Let's stand together. Look upon his face. By the hand, oh yeah, me too. Everybody sing it. Uh,
come into the power of your kingdom. Put me back together again, Lord. And everybody said, uh, Amen. 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 Are there announcements? Thank you, brother. And you can close after. Thank you. Tomorrow we have an opportunity to go to the prison in town here at 2 o'clock and visit the young people. You have to be 18 years of age or older, and we haven't put up a sign-up sheet, but are there some who would like to come? You can be adults, um, older young people. Would you raise your hand if you are thinking about it? I see one, two, three, four five, six, seven. Okay, we have probably have room for eight. So we probably have room for one or two more than that. We can usually take a dozen to 15. Brother Miller, we have the same problem at the jail. They don't know what to call us. So they say they have to announce our arrival. Uh, they say the pastors are coming to team two. It's Dwayne and Lee's and me and we, they know us as brother and sister. And I say, just say, uh, two friars and a chick. <laughs> so, <laughs> they've never tried that yet. <laughs> but we'll meet here at about uh, 20 after 1 and have a time of prayer. And those of you who are planning to go, just pray. You know, God, uh, Jack said that on Sunday as they met in Stony Mountain Prison, in uh, just north of Winnipeg on Sunday. He said there was such a moving of the Spirit of God. He said there were 20 or 30 of us there and it just seemed, he said, I've never been in a meeting where God moved in such an anointing, the way he put it. And so praise God, he's, he's wanting to move in the unusual places, praise his name. Um, tomorrow we have the non-Albertans and the non-Saskatchewans helping with the, in the dining hall. Thank you very much. And then uh, tomorrow, those of you from Saskatchewan, you can start signing up for Friday. And uh, so thank you very much. Are there any other announcements? Good evening. I just wanted to let you know that uh, my mom and dad are celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. And we're having a big celebration on the 11th of August in Rose Town, and we hope you can all come. But for those of you that have traveled from far away and maybe can't, we're going to have a little tea in the old dining hall tomorrow afternoon from 3 to 4 to celebrate not just my mom and dad, but the brother and sister Luff and brother and sister Price have also celebrated their 50th anniversaries this year. So come on out and we will just uh, celebrate together everyone that's been married 50 years. Let's just bow in prayer. Our Father, we thank you so much for the words that have been spoken tonight and for your presence that's been with us. Father, we just pray that you would watch over each one, that you would help those words to just become ingrained in our hearts, and that our spirits would become in line with what you want and be the leaders of our lives. And so, Lord, we thank you for all the words that have been given, and we just pray again for your blessing and your protection upon us all as you dismiss us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just one more thing. I think uh, songbooks were taken to Caleb Village today. One of them has my name on it, and I'd rather not go through the whole building looking for it. So if you find uh, one there that says Ryan Hannigan on it, I'd appreciate that. Otherwise, you're dismissed.